Now we're going to look at an application of using structs. So I want to write a program that reads a file of university courses. To get the file name of the schedule of courses, I'm going to pass that in on the command line. I'm doing that one to gain some experience doing such things, but also if I want to reuse the program each semester with a different schedule, I could pass in a different file of courses without having to change my code. So it gives me more flexibility there. If you're not familiar with how that works, that is reading from the command line, I have a video on that that I will link to in the description below. So once I've read the file, then what I want to do is for each course in the CSE department, because this will be for an entire university, the file that I pass in. But for those courses that are from the CSE department, I want to count how many sections there are of that course, and then the total enrollment for that course. So if the course was, for example, CSE 1310, and section number one had 40 people, and section number two had 50 people, then what I would want to do is say that there's two sections with 90 people in the final output. And then the third requirement here is simply print that list of courses that I found showing the course number, the total number of sections, and the total enrollment. So how do we do this? Well, let's look at the data first. I almost always start with looking at the data on problems like this. So this is actual data that I got from the University of Texas at Arlington from the spring of 2018. I did have to clean up a few things because the string tokenization function in C is not very robust, so I had to fix a few things to make it more reasonable to do. But if I look at this and say, okay, what do I need out of this? I say, okay, well, I wanted the course number. That's what they call the subject because the first line here is a header line. So here it says CE, that's for civil engineering, nursing, business statistics. So I want that first column. Then I want the course number because I'm actually going to save that. Well, that's catalog number, so that's the second thing here. It's so like CE 4320. And then I said I want the enrollment. So column one, two, three, four, five, six says enrollment total. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So if CE was what I was looking at, then I'd want to get the 4320 and the three to use. So if we look, for example, since I used 1310 as an example earlier, there's 1310, so there's a section of it that has uh, 41 people signed up for it. There's another section, another section, and so forth. If I want to find out what all the sections are, this would help later for testing. I could do a grep, uh, CSE, 1310, string schedule. So that file contains five entries for 1310. So the total enrollment, so that's approximately 100, that's approximately 100, and that's approximately 100. So it's about 300, give or take. So I can use that when I'm testing to make sure that my program output appears to be correct. But certainly the five sections I should be, be able to easily verify. So how do I go about doing this? Well, typically what I do then is I start with some sample data and try to see how I would do it by hand because it may not be clear to me what the underlying process is. So let's set up some sample data and look at that. So the file contains other courses. So I might say, well, okay, my course file, so my course list here, might contain something like this, English 1301, and it has 50 people in it. Do I need to write down all the other stuff? I don't think that's really important for the sake of what I'm going to do because ultimately I need to store something like this and this. So those other columns I'm not going to deal with other than to get past to get what I need. So I can trim down my toy version of the data here. And let's say then we have CSE 1310 and it has 50 people. And then let's say we had philosophy. 
and 2403 with 23 people and here's CSE 2320 it has 50 people and here's CSE 1310 again now with 40 people and let's say then we had um, another English class it's also 1301 another section of it with 25 people and we probably can stop there I want to make this as realistic as it takes for me to understand the underlying development process right? so what did we say we need the output well, I need the course number I need the section count so here's 1310 here's 1310 so if this was all the data I had I would need to say two for that and the total enrollment so ultimately I'm gonna need course number section count and total enrollment So I'll start working through the problem. So we said we're only doing this for CSE courses. So here's English, so I don't need that, so I jump down to the next thing. CSE, so 1310, I have one section with an enrollment of 50 people. Philosophy, don't need that. CSE 2320, 2320, one section, also 50 people. CSE 1310, 40 people. 1310's on the list, so now I have two sections, and this would be 50 plus 40, I'll just write that way, which would be 90. And then English, then I can stop. So as I'm doing this, I'm trying to understand what was my process and what do I need to pay attention to when I'm writing my code. So what did I notice? I noticed a couple things. One, when adding an unseen course stored in next available spot or line, next available line, we'll say that for what I wrote. And initialized. section count and enrollment that is when I added 1310 the first time I put it right here because this is the top of my list so I put in 1310 I said that the count was one because that's all you have if this the first time you're seeing it and there were 50 people but then when I found another section of 1310 I updated or incremented, we'll say, section count and updated by adding the sum enrollment. So this tells me, especially this second observation here, it tells me what I have to be careful of is that when I see a course for a second or third or more time, don't add it to another line. So don't do this, don't say 1310, I saw it once, and then 1310 again, one, and then I put the 40 here instead of up here. So I don't wanna do that, I wanna find it and update it. And I can only find it if I know that it's on the list already somehow. All right, so what about the printing? What needs to happen? Well, if this is some type of table, we could call this row one, row two, row three, but I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna call it row zero, row one, and so forth. So how many things am I ultimately gonna print? Well, my count, so course count, started at zero, then I found 1310, CC 1310, so it went to one, found 20 through 20, went to two, so that's a total of two, so there's two things to be printed. So I think I have some ideas of what I need to do in my code, but then I think, well, how do I store all this? 
Well, as I said at the very beginning, this was an application of structure. So I look at it and say, for each course, store course number, section count, enrollment total. And because I could potentially have lots of different courses, I'd have lots of different course numbers I need to store, lots of section counts, and lots of enrollment totals. So I want to package all these together into a struct. And since there's lots of courses, I'm going to create an array of structs, which is why up here I call these row 0 and row 1. So I'm thinking of these really as being the index. So at index 0 in my array is 1310. At index 1 is 20 through 20, and so forth. So that's how I'm going to go about doing it. I've already written the program because it took some time to do the development and do the debugging and such. But we're going to look at the code, and I'll explain the rationale behind certain things. But the, but the uh, design part is really the more difficult part in many cases. So now that I've done this, let's look at some pseudocode that I also that I wrote. So here's what I want to do. Create an initial array of structs. I'm going to get the file name from the command line and then open that file. And then for each line of the file, if the course is CSE, I need to also get the course number and the enrollment count. Why not the section number? Well, I don't care about the actual section number. I just update the section count. But I need the enrollment amount because I'm going to be producing a sum of total enrollments. Then I'm going to search my array. That's this part right here. So if course number is not in the array, I want to add the course number to next position in the array, which happens to also match my count, and then initialize the section count and initialize the enrollment sum, right? Because I'm going to say, if it's the first thing I've ever seen, I'm going to store the course number, the section count will be one, and the enrollment sum will just be the sum, or excuse me, the enrollment amount for that one section at this point. But if I find the course is already in the array, well then at that position in the array, I want to increment the section count and update the enrollment sum by adding this section's enrollment to the existing enrollment. Once I've done this for every line of the file, then I'm going to close the file, and then for each struct in the array, print the course number, the section count, and the enrollment sum. So think about this as we look at my code because it matches pretty closely to what I've written here. Once I've fleshed this part out, the coding part's not typically that difficult. So when we were looking at the data, I found that the subject or the course number was in column one, the catalog number was column two, and the enrollment total was column six. And just to make clear that the first column is called column one, not column zero, since we're not talking about an array here, I put a little note in there to be clear about that. Then I created my structure definition. So initially I was thinking, well, I need to store the department as well. But then I remembered, I'm only doing this for CSE courses, so I don't really need that. But I left this in as a comment, just to make it clear to somebody else that I didn't accidentally leave out the course name, or the, excuse me, the department name. Then what I call the ID here is the course number, then there's the section count and the total enrollment. Then I'm gonna have a couple of functions that we'll explain here in a moment. But let's go to main. Since I'm gonna read in the, the file name from the command line, I need to use argc and argv here. Now I'm going to uh, create my array of structures of this type, struct courses, and by looking at the list of possible courses, I realized there won't be more than 100 distinct courses. So even if there were, well, as we saw, there were five sections of 1310. They only take up one array position. So this should be more than enough for what we need. But I do need to keep track of how many courses I add to this because I'll need that when I'm printing. And then I'm gonna do some basic error checking right here. What does this do? Well, let's look and see what happens when we run the program. I said, 
that the way to run it is to give it a list of those courses. But if I don't know that or I forget, when I run the program here, RC is supposed to be a count of how many things are on the command line. Since there's only one thing, clearly I didn't also pass it in the name of the file to read. So this just tells me how to use it correctly. It's, this is the executable name, a.out, and then it needs the schedule file. So if I used it correctly now and gave it this file, I get this right here. So if we're looking for 1310, let me find that. I'm going to pass this to grep. There's my five sections, and we had estimated it was approximately 300 students. Well, it was 287, so I was off by 13. Right? And there were 69 total courses, so my 100 is more than enough. All right? So now do we, what do we need to do? Well, I need to open up the file, get the information, and store it in the array. So I'm going to have a function for doing that. So I give it the structure here, or the array of structures, because print array will also go back through this. So I'm creating it outside of read data. And argv1 is the name of the file. So when I wrote this right here, this will be stored in argv1. So I'm passing that to num of courses. Or excuse me, it passed it to read data. So now let's look at read data. Sometimes I like to include a description of what I'm passing in and what I'm returning. And so this says that what I'm returning here, this int, will be the count of how many courses get added to the array. Because then I'll turn around and pass that information to my print function so it only looks at that many spots in the array. So my buffer here can store a line from the file. I inspected the file and determined that even the biggest line in the file can be stored in 200 bytes. That counts the terminating null as well as new line characters or anything else I need to worry about. So that's more than enough. So now I'm going to open up the file. But remember the top line, if we look at it again, use head here, and I'll look at say the top five lines of uh, this file. The top line here is my header line. That's useful for me for reading, but my program doesn't use it at all. So I need to throw that out. And then I'm going to start basically with the second line, inspecting the subjects to see if they're CSE or not. So I call fgetString once, but then I don't do anything with what's currently stored in buffer. And I wrote a comment here saying that I'm throwing it away so somebody else looking at it realizes that's what happened. So now when I call fgetString the second time, I'm actually picking up on the second line of the file. And I know that the first column I'll need. So when I say token equals string token buffer, that's going to be the value for the department. So now I'm going to check and see, is that CSE? If it is, string compare here will return zero, and then I need to do some other work. If not, then I just skip past it. So there would be my matching, uh, there's the matching curly brace right there that goes with if statement, and this one down here goes with the while. But if it is a CSE course, then we saw that the second column is the course ID, so my next call to string toke will give me that. I chose to store the course number, like 4320 here, as an integer instead of a string. One of the benefits of that is it allows me to do comparisons by simply doing an equal equal. So I compare one number to another number instead of using string compare. But I chose to do that, and so that means that the course number which string toke would bring this in as a string, needs to be converted to an integer. So I embed the call to string toke inside the call to eight i. I could have said token equals string toke and then eight i token, but this just cuts out the extra step. So now I store it because I'm gonna call string toke again. But remember the next thing I need is in the sixth column. So I'm gonna throw away the third column, the fourth column, the fifth column that I get from string toke. And in fact, I don't even write token equals here because I know I'm not going to use that information. This is perfectly fine. Now when I call string token for the sixth time for a given line, that will be the enrollment for that section. It definitely needs to be converted to an integer, so I do that right here, and I store it in enrollment. Our pseudocode said once I have that information, then I need to either determine that that course has been seen before, and if so, simply update 
the section count and the enrollment sum at that place in the array or add it the first time. So let's see how I find the course first and then we'll talk more about that. So I call this function find course and I give it the ID of the course I'm looking for as well as how much of the array I've currently used. Because remember, since I didn't initialize the array, I have garbage values stored there and I don't really want to be making comparisons against garbage values because I don't really know how that might turn out. It, it could accidentally think it matches something that it wasn't a real match. So I basically just go down every structure that's currently stored in the array and compare the ID number of the used position with the ID number of the current line of the file. If I find a match, then I return the index for that struct. So going back to my example here, when I found 1310 for the second time, it was at index zero. So I need to update index zero, not put something at index two here. And if I were to find CSC 2320 again somewhere down here, it would be at index one, so I need to update that. So why not just say return zero here to indicate false, for example, that I couldn't find a match. Well, look at the example I just gave you. Zero is a valid index. So if I return zero down here, that claims I did find the current course at position zero. So instead, I use minus one since that never could be a valid index. And then I put a little comment here to remind whoever's reading this that that's the reason why I did it. Right? So this function either returns the index to the position in the array where that course is already stored, or it returns negative one to say, I've never seen it before, so add it the first time. So I do several things in this if statement. Inside these parentheses is my call to find course in which I search for, say for example, if I'm looking for 1310, search it. And then whatever value I get is returned and assigned to index. Well, then this expression, which is inside parentheses, reduces to the value that's stored in index. So if I found the current course number at index five, I would have index equals five. And then I'd be comparing five to negative one, which would mean this was not a new course. So then I go down here to index five and add one to the section count and then add the current enrollment to the overall enrollment. If this is minus one, then I found a match to minus one, which means that course is unseen. So now I store it at the next available position, which is stored in the count variable. That's my total count of how many things I've seen. So I want to store that course number, initialize section count to one, and then initialize, because there's just an equal here, not plus equal, initialize total enrollment to the enrollment of that section. So one of these two things will happen. Once I've seen every line in the file, then I'm gonna close the file and I'm gonna return the count of how many unique courses I found. So now we're at this point, now I wanna print the array. So I give it the name of the array to this function, as well as how many courses I found that are out of the 100 I could have possibly had. So let's look at print array. So I decided to do a couple of things. If we look at my enrollment again, or my output, excuse me, not only do I print the requirements, which says something like CSE 6369 has one section, and I'm sort of anal about such things. So when there was two sections, I put an S there, and then here's the enrollment numbers, but I also decided to keep a count of the total number of courses that were found the total number of sections among those courses, since as we can see, some courses have multiple sections, and then the overall enrollment for all the sections. So the 132 here is really the sum of this column, and the 46, 43 is the sum of this column. So I just go through my array, and then here's where I ask the question saying, if the section count is one, then print the line with the word section, and then update the section count and the enrollment count. But if the section count is greater than one, then I'm gonna print sections. And of course, this right here happens regardless, so I always update the section count in total count. 
And then when this loop is done, I finally printed the overall number of sections and the overall combined enrollment as well as the number of courses. So that's the whole thing. But the hard work really is figuring out what you need to do, what parts of the data you need, and then how to extract the parts that you need. And then once again, if we were to look at my pseudocode, I think you would agree that what I've written here, even though it's high level, is pretty close to a match for what happened here. Of course, I don't get into some specifics like, well, how do you find if the course number is in the array? That's the reason why I write programs. So I don't want to get into very detailed programming instructions here. That's not the purpose of pseudocode. It's to help me see the big picture so then I can figure out what I need to do. So if I look and say, okay, uh, open file. Well, then I go down here and I already know what the code for that is. That's this. For each line of file. Okay, that's this right here. Things like that. I know how to translate these things into these lines of code, but I have to know to do it first. And that's why I do this over here before I ever start coding. If you find videos like this helpful, please hit the subscribe button.